The Fort Drive turns east from Fort Reno, past Fort Kearney and Battery Terrell, to Broad Branch, and so reaches Rock Creek Park, in which Fort Durussi has long been preserved as a feature of the park system. Fort Durussi was one of those under fire during Jubal Early's raid in 1864. From there, we proceed through the park by military road, which was a part of the original system of fortifications and is now a good example of the kind of parkway connection proposed for the Fort Drive. Thus, we reach Fort Stevens, which is now a sleeping fortress, but here we see the site and monument where Abraham Lincoln was under fire during that same raid at the end of the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln was the only president of the United States to be under fire while serving in that office. From Fort Stevens, the Fort Drive goes through a densely built up portion of the city to a wooded park at Fort Slocum where the rifle pits are still clearly discernible and where the park will serve a dual purpose of preservation of the fort and service of the local community. Fort Totten is the next stop. Fort Totten is perhaps the best preserved of all the Civil War forts. Here we see the batteries and rifle trenches all complete. Fort Totten overlooks a distant view and particularly an institutional area to the east over which, beyond which, we see McKinley Hill towards which we now proceed and from which we look back to Fort Totten on the skyline to the west or east to Fort Lincoln in the grounds of the National Training School for Boys. Fort Lincoln, right on the District of Columbia, Maryland line, looks out into Maryland and back into the district. And from here, we go through the valley of the Anacostia, past Fort Mahan, to Fort Chaplin, which lies directly east of the capital on the line of East Capitol Street. The next stop is Colden Hill, which again commands a view back over the city, in which the capital and monument are, of course, the dominating feature. Fort DuPont, as it looked in 1864, a very different place from what it is now, with this peaceful entrance from the highway, and with its fortifications buried deep in honeysuckle at the top of the hill. From Fort DuPont, we also have distant views back over the city. This large park reservation for the future service of the anticipated population which will be developed in Anacostia is now used as a nursery for street trees. Fort Davis, still another of the forts, is utilized as a picnic grove and lies close beside Pennsylvania Avenue, over which the Fort Drive will someday be carried. From that future bridge, we have this view back to the Capitol Dome and the Library of Congress. The drive continues along the ridge of the Anacostia Hills to Fort Stanton, from which we look north towards the place which we previously visited, Fort Lincoln, across the Anacostia marshes and to the west through the trees to the Washington Monument and to the Capitol with the Navy Yard in the foreground. These views back over the city are typical of those which are to be obtained all around the Fort Drive. We next go to the Shepherd Parkway and Fort Carroll overlooking the extension of bowling field and the intersection of the Potomac and Anacostia rivers, the War College, and straight north up 
South Capitol Street to the Capitol Dome. This port drive encircling the city of Washington is a part of the future regional park system and directly connects with the principal parkway of the regional park system at the district line. These parks were authorized for purchase under the Kappa Crampton Act in 1930. And the principal park is that of the George Washington Memorial Parkway along both banks of the Potomac River. The first unit to be considered now is the Fort Washington Parkway along the Maryland side of the river, past Fort Foot, which occupies this bluff across the river from Alexandria, with the waters of the Potomac lapping an attractive beach at the foot of the hillside. From the top of the hill, we look across the river through the trees to the Masonic Memorial and the bridge on the Mount Vernon Memorial Highway over Hunting Creek. From Fort Foot, the parkway continues past Indian Queen Bluff, Broad Branch, to Fort Washington, a suitable terminus for the eastern sector of this parkway. Fort Washington, originally designed by Pierre Lawfon, has a picturesque Fort Cullis and Drawbridge and huge masonry walls overlooking the Potomac downstream and up straight 10 miles to the Washington Monument. Short distance across the river lies Mount Vernon, the home of the father of his country, which we see here from an army dirigible loaned for the purpose of this moving picture. Mount Vernon is the terminus of the new Mount Vernon Memorial Highway, which at this circle is provided with adequate parking space for visitors to the National Shrine. The parkway has a right of way never less than 200 feet in width and skirts the river to Fort Hunt, another of the Civil War forts recently vacated by the Army, which it is hoped to turn into golf courses, playing fields, tennis courts, and other activities which would not be appropriate close to the Mount Vernon Shrine. Here is a golden opportunity for camping, picnicking, and play. The Mount Vernon Memorial Highway continues north along the bank of the river and was constructed in the great rush in order to have it completed for this bicentennial year. It meant the employment of large numbers of men. The parkway proceeds along the river to Alexandria.